Hello everyone, my name is Reverend Sung Jae Yan, Minister of Borneo Park Uniting Church. I welcome you all to join this virtual worship service with the people of Borneo Park Uniting Church. I give thanks to God for this coming week where I will be full of expectation and excitement to prepare to welcome all our church members, families, guests and visitors to join our face-to-face -face worship service. Acknowledgement for the First Peoples We acknowledge the Wallumadago people, the first inhabitants of this place. We honor them for their custodianship of the land on which we gather today. Call to worship. Please join me in saying this call to worship. Your responses are both fonts. We see light, hope, and joy. We bring hearts, soul, mind, and body. We share blessings and fears. We bring faith and doubt. With all that we are and all that we have, let us worship God together. Great is the Lord and most worthy. to your God, God, holy place, the joy of the whole earth. Great is the Lord in whom we have the victory. He aids us against the enemy. We bow down on our knees Though we want to leave your name on high And though we want to thank you For the works you've done in our lives And though we trust in your unfailing love Throughout earth and heaven of all Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise In the city of our God, the holy place The joy of the Lord, in whom we have the victory, He aids us against the enemy. We bow down on our knees, and Lord, we want to leave your name on high. Lord, we want to thank you for the works you've done in our lives. And Lord, we trust in your unfailing love. For you alone are God eternal throughout earth and heaven above. Lord, we want to live
do you know the story of guide dogs in Australia? In 1950, Dr. Arnold Cook arrived in Australia with the country's first guide dog. Dr. Cook is a young West Australian who lost his sight at the age of 18 through a rare disease. Arnold became familiar with guide dogs after traveling to England to study at the London School of Economics. He trained at Britain's Guide Dog Association and was paired with a black Labrador named Driana. Arnold and his guide dog Driana created enormous interest upon their return to Australia. Unsurprisingly, many other West Australians with low vision were eager to partner with a guide dog. And a year later, the first guide dog association was formed in Perth. In 1957, there were guide dog associations in each state of Australia. Did you know guide dogs are permitted to travel inside cars, trains, buses, and planes? Have you ever been on one of those modes of travel and seen a guide dog with their handler? What do you always have to remember when you see a guide dog? That's right, you're not supposed to touch them, are you? Because they're only supposed to be touched by the handler. But it's instinctive, isn't it, to just go up there and pat them. And often the handler will say, that's okay but you should always wait until the handler tells you, gives you permission to actually touch their dog. Do you know what the best breeds for a guide dog are? Of course, people in our church have dogs and I would say Brittany Spaniels would be the best type of breed. And I know other people who probably say that Jack Russell is a good breed to be a guide dog. And maybe someone else would say a Beagle is a good guide dog. And maybe someone else would say a purdle is. I think that covers all the dogs we have in the, in the congregation. And I'm sure everyone thinks their dog would be the best breed. However, that's not true. The best breed for a guide dog are Labradors, Golden Retrievers, or German Shepherds. They have been the most, and remain to be the most common purebreds on the program. Historically, the golden retriever crossed with the Labrador has produced the most successful guide dog of all, combining many of the great traits of both breeds. Maybe that means we have to train our dogs a bit better so that they can be a guide dog too. In our Bible readings today, we hear about Bartimaeus who was blind and he was sitting on the side of the road. He had never seen the beauty of a bouquet of flowers or the people he loved. He was sitting on the side of the road one day when he heard that Jesus was passing by. Bartimaeus had heard about Jesus and about how he had healed many who were blind. So he called out to Jesus, 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 come here. Jesus heard him and asked Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? Teacher, he said, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. And the Bible tells us his sight was healed immediately. And then he followed Jesus along the road. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you for the gift of sight. But more than that, we thank you that one day we will see you in heaven. May we always open our eyes and see your wonderful creation. And we pray that you will guide us in the best way to protect this world we live in and our families, friends, and communities. Amen. We're now going to see a video about this Bible reading of Bartimaeus. Before we actually start it, we'll give you 30 seconds. All of you who love drawing, go and get some paper and pens 
and see if you can draw like Samuel, who tells this story and draws it, this whole story. And enjoy, enjoy the story of Bardapes and always keep your eyes open to see what is happening around you. But I'm also really looking forward to seeing it, most of you next Sunday at church for our first face-to-face -face service since June the 27th. So how many months is that? It's four months since we've, we've seen each other face-to-face. -face. So we're really, I'm really looking forward to seeing you all and seeing how much taller you've got. Because I'm sure you've all grown an inch or two in that time. Where we old ones have probably shrunk. But we, I, we are all looking forward to seeing each other and hope to see as many as we can next Sunday at our church service at Baronia Park. So enjoy your week and we'll see you then. Bye. Hey guys, this is Sam. Um, just thought I would share something with you guys and try something new. Um, so let's start. Well, hi again. Hope you guys are all doing okay. Well, so today's story is about Bartimaeus, and he had a problem. He was blind, blind since birth. But recently, there's been talk about a certain someone who apparently had the ability to heal the blind. Yeah, really. And so one day, he's on the side of the street begging. But it seems that a crowd is gathering. So he inquires, what's going on? And he finds out it's Jesus, the very person he heard about who could heal the blind. So what does he do? He cries out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. But then the ones around him begin to rebuke him. What are you doing? You're too loud, quiet down. So what does he do? He cries out much more. He was desperate. Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stops, he hears him, and he comes to him and asks him, what do you want me to do for you? And he responds, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And the Lord said, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. So what was so special about Bartimaeus? His story was recorded a couple of times in the Bible, and you consider the rest of the crowd was there. And I bet you they had problems of their own, but they didn't have any direct interaction with the Lord. So why? Well, Bartimaeus was desperate and he cried out. He made himself heard. He was also direct. Lord, that I may receive my sight. And so, you know, actually, Bartimaeus is a story about me and us. It's a story about us. We all have problems. But the Lord's there asking, what do you want me to do for you? And so, you know, we've heard of this person before. We've heard of Jesus before. We may have considered him before, but the crowd is there. Our reasoning, our minds, maybe it's our family, maybe it's our friends. Um, what are you doing? All these things can be a crowd to us, but we should be like Bartimaeus, desperate and direct. So how do we be like Bartimaeus today? Well, Romans 10, 9 says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So it's confess with your mouth, that's calling, and believe in your heart, that's to have faith. So we can even practice this in a prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I no longer want to be just someone in the crowd hearing about you. I receive you into my heart. Be my peace, rest, and life these coming days. Amen. So this was a happy ending. Bartimaeus left with his sight restored and praising the Lord. Well, that was kind of fun, but a little harder than I expected. Um, yeah, I hope you guys got what I was trying to say in times like this with the coronavirus and everything. Sometimes good to be like Bartimaeus, desperate, reaching out and direct, reaching out to friends, reaching out to family and reaching out to the Lord. Lord, how about you be my peace? Lord, be my rest. 
well, yeah, that's it from me. Hope you guys are doing okay. Um, till next time. The first Bible reading comes from Job chapter 42, verses 1 to 6. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You ask, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now and I will speak. I will question you and you shall answer me. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. The second Bible reading comes from Mark chapter 10 verses 46 to 52. Titled Blind Bartimaeus Receives His Sight. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving a city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us continue to worship God together in saying this pastoral prayer of intercession. These prayers are inspired by Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52, and Job chapter 42, and Hebrews chapter 7, verses 23 to 28. Heavenly Father, like Job, when we ask for your presence and intervention, we will end up on knees, astonished at your greatness, and humbled by our own unworthiness. Loving God, you hear our prayers. You live among us. Holy Spirit, when we tearfully share our hopes and dreams with you, you promise a harvest of joy. Fill us with expectations of your goodness. Loving God, you hear our prayers. You live among us. Lord Jesus Christ, High Priest and Intercessor for our sins, help us live as your children, trusting that we are also children of the Heavenly Father. Loving God, you hear our prayers, you live among us. Lord Jesus, Healer of body male's blindness, help us see you in this world active in love, and help us see you by our side, so we may walk your way without stumbling. Loving God, you hear our prayers, you live among us. Lord Jesus, great physicians, hear now the names of those we know who need your healing. Mary Louise Klimkowski, Judy Robinson, Alan Warbank, and also names we may miss. Loving God, you hear our prayers, you live among us. The love of God has won, the new life has begun. Amen. My wife Grace is married for 20 years with me and raises her three children. She's my wife and also a parent. 
In terms of her career, she is a jazz pianist and teaches the primary school is kids how to play piano as beginner. She loves coffee and having chat with people, especially her sister Julie. She's always misses her mother very much, who lives in her hometown in South Korea, and dreams to go visit her mother one day. She helps me remarkably in my ministry at Borneo Park Uniting Church as a member and as a friend of many. I believe that she seems to travel well now with her family, friends, her career and her church community. I want to add one more thing. Without this, without this, Grace is not who really she is. She is a person of faith who has such a great passion in God's mission. Her mission for all, her mission or her God's calling in her life means to go for gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ to people in North Korea if God leads her purpose. In 1998, Grace and I had an altar call and responded by standing up during a mission and evangelism worship conference called Revival 1998. She had already been to the Philippines and Taiwan for mission outreach trips. And at that time, I was also planning to join a mission trip for the First Peoples in Wellington and La Perouse in New South Wales in Australia. I recall we both were full of passion in following Jesus Christ and believed that going overseas with Christ's mission was what it means to follow and obey God's call in our entire lives. In our responses to the altar call we could have gained new eyes to see this world where God moves and works for His people in various and marvelous ways that we have never seen. After the godly incident, I joined two overseas mission trips, the first one for Australia in June 1999 and the other one, the second one, for Sudan and Ethiopia in January year 2000. Then we decided to give our first year of married life to God in serving a Korean migrant church in Belmore and also Aboriginal mission in 2001. When we arrived in the Sydney airport, we had only two large check-in luggage and two small carriers. We kept reminding each other, saying, Sungje and Grace, let us always make it possible to move if God calls us to go. We are missionaries. Don't store up anything that stops us going where God's call leads us. However, when we became realistic in this country a few years later. We found that we have three children who have already formed their own community of hearts to belong, and a puppy who walks and plays in the area we live, and so many things that we possess. My worry at the moment is that I would not say yes if God calls Grace and me to follow the call that we received in the autumn of 1998. Let's talk about the Bible reading. Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus was sitting beside the road to Jerusalem via Jericho. The city was the last stop before arriving in Jerusalem. The poor blind beggar was sitting by the roadside. 
hearing only of many people walking on their pilgrimage. Imagine that his father Timaeus or someone walked him to the spot and let him sit for begging all day and after each day took him back where he should have hidden himself. This was what his daily life looked like. He is landless and disabled. He is a victim of the system. He had nothing to lose but a tiny hope that there is one who can bring mercy for him. He did not know when and what to ask. He was desperate for mercy. Again, someone walked him to the roadside and sit. But that day was a bit different to him because he heard amongst the crowd of the pilgrims that it was Jesus of Nazareth. Nothing stopped him. He shouted, Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. His action could make Jesus and the disciples dangerous because Jesus was known to many as the Messiah, which meant his words and deeds were all against Roman rulers and Jewish religious leaders. He was targeted by the powers and authorities. Thus, many rebuked him, many disciples rebuked him, telling him, Shh! Do you want us to be in trouble? But he had nothing to lose. Then he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Did his desperate efforts move the one amongst the pilgrims? Yes, Jesus called Bartimaeus. Then he replied, My teacher, let me see this world again. In 1999, I had a surgery, a day surgery for my left eyes. I used to have a minor squint. I could not inform this to anyone when I found that I am a squinter. I kept this secret many years. But there was a good opportunity for me and my parents to open the secret up and have the surgery. All went well. The doctor recommended me not to drive car because it may make my eyes move a lot during the recovery period. It took almost three months to recover. During the period, my left eye did not work 100%. It was so blurry and always teary to see. My family, my grace, my friends and the nature and all things looked half clear and half blurred. The eyesight came back eventually and then I could see my eyes before a mirror that has no more squint. I was so glad that I am okay to see. I gained a new sight which helped me to see myself and my portrait with confidence. The world looked more beautiful than ever before because I could gain confidence to present myself to the world. Like Bartimaeus, it was a merciful moment in life for me to see the world anew. He used to have nothing to lose, but after the godly encounter with Jesus Christ, he would have gained something to give or something to share with others. He did not need any help from his father 
or others to walk him to the roadside. He did not need any more to beg for his living. He used to be a victim of the system, but now he became a beneficiary of God's mercy. Now became Bartimaeus, his name and sacred instead of being called a blind man on roadside or beggar. His name is written on the gospel reading and now remembered by many who may want to see this world clearly where every human being and every living thing are sacred. Do we see like Bartimaeus? Jesus commanded him saying, Go, your faith has healed you. He was able to see Son of David, Jesus of Nazareth, in his sight. The famous birth from Job, which is one of the Bible readings today, says, My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Yes, Jesus made Bartimaeus hear and see a God of healing and giving hope who loves and calls him. He used to be sitting on the roadside on pilgrimage towards Jerusalem, but now he had a God's call and in his response he began to follow Christ Jesus along the road to his final mission in Jerusalem to fulfill God's love for every human being and every living thing. He became a pilgrim with Christ on the road of discipleship. Since the altar call and our initial responses, Grace and I have encountered so many people, so many lives, and been involved in many life events. In Korea, Australia, African countries, European countries, Southeast Asian countries, we have met many people and have heard of their sacred and unique life stories. To me, in my journey within the Uniting Church, I believe that I have been formed and even transformed by many people and communities becoming who really I am. All I believe is that people and communities I have encountered with have helped me to gain new eyes to see clearly this world and its all experiences. It might be cultures, languages, lifestyles, values and norms. Some are personal and some are communal. As I reflected on the gifts of all who I have met, their wisdom, understanding and knowledge in both life and faith, I would feel that I have the courage to give back the gifts to you and to many. I'm feeling obligated to many, including all of you, all of you, for sharing their life-giving stories and faith in Christ Jesus. This makes me continue my ministry today. This makes me locate in order to find out God's will on the road of discipleship. Bartimaeus gave up what little he had. The clock was left. The place where he used to sit and beg became a mark of what it means to follow Jesus. So dear my brothers and sisters in Christ, let us remember that what we do and what we say are a mark of our faith in Jesus Christ. I may ask you to think about what your first word would be and what your first deed would look like on Sunday, the 31st of October, the first day of reopening.
I hope that those words and deeds do not have to be the correct ones, but need to be the life-giving ones. I pray that our life-giving words and deeds bring us back on the road where we find a hope for a better tomorrow during the with COVID-19 world. Let us be a Christ. Let us be a Christ for each other and reopen our eyes to see this world. We pray that Jesus let us see again. Let us see through your eyes of love so that we might follow you on the road. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another Sunday where we can come to worship together in spirit, if not in body. As the world opens up to normal life, we ask for your guidance. We ask for your help. We ask you for your blessings on the frontline workers who have been working for us for the past few months. We remember that COVID is a global issue and there are lots of people who need help in the world. We pray for you to help all your children in the world. In particular, we pray for the Caribbean, Antigua and Barbuda, Aruba, Bahamas, Barbados, Cuba, Curaçao, Dominica, Dominican Republic, Grenada, Guyana, Haiti, Jamaica, Puerto Rico, St. Martin, St. Kitts Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadine, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago. We pray for their citizens and their world leaders. We also pray for Glaze Hill Presbyterian Church and Carlos Korean Church. We pray that you will lead their congregation as they do your work in the community. We also ask for your love and guidance for our congregation. In particular, please help us to prepare wisely for the joyful face-to-face -face worship that will begin next week. We pray for your blessing on our minister Seung Jae and his family. We pray for all of our members and pray that you will keep us all safe. We pray for all these things in your name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Father, send me 
revival and start to walk in me. Lord, I hunger, thirst for your righteousness. Father, come and fill me once again. Lord, I hunger, thirst for your righteousness. Fill me with your oil and your wine. The benediction. So, dear my brothers and sisters in Christ, go now from this service of worship to the service of God's people near and far, refreshed by the healing insight of Jesus Christ. Listen for the thirsting places of neighbors. Search out the hopeless places where may need fresh perspectives and become for them a companion on the road. And as you go, may the blessings of the God of life, the Christ of love, and the Spirit of grace be upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. I wish you all the best this coming week and hopefully see you all safely and well on coming Sunday, the 31st of October at 9.30 a.m. at Bronia Park Uniting Church. See you then. Bye. <laughs>